next speaker is Josh Cannon, and he'll be sharing his work on a passively actuated triangular radiator fin array. Josh Cannon received his Bachelor of Science degree in mechanical engineering from Brigham, Brigham Young University in the summer of 2020. He is currently beginning his first year as a graduate student at Brigham Young, studying mechanical engineering and focusing on heat transfer and spacecraft technologies. Welcome, Josh. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Today I'll be sharing our preliminary research on a passively actuated triangular fin array. My co-authors include Dr. Brian Iverson, who is also from Brigham Young University, as well as Wenbin Song and Dr. Ridge Mulford from the University of Dayton. Oops. As the miniaturization of control electronics and instruments improves, small satellites such as CubeSats are being used for an increasing variety of payloads and in more diverse mission locations. CubeSat developers must employ novel solutions for thermal control of their spacecraft, with this increasing system complexity and function. Small satellite thermal control can be challenging due to large fluctuations in external heat input, large fluctuations in internal heat loads, and a small form factor, specifically that small satellites such as CubeSats face the added challenge of suffering from high power dissipation per unit surface area, more stringent size and weight restrictions, and reduced thermal mass when compared with larger spacecraft. In our paper, we categorize approaches to CubeSat thermal control based on two factors, whether the thermal control system is powered and whether the radiator is responsive. We define a responsive or dynamic radiator as one whose surface geometry or properties can be modified to modulate radiative heat loss. A static radiator does not have this ability. Thus, thermal control systems can be either active or passive and static or dynamic. Many small satellites utilize uh, active dynamic thermal control systems. However, passive systems offer the potential of dynamic thermal control without the added system complexity and control system dependence. Additionally, passive systems may offer size, weight, and power savings compared to active systems. The thermal control system we propose here is a dynamic passive system using a deployable radiator. In addition to offering a potentially high turndown ratio, deployable radiators can also reject the greatest amount of heat among common state-of-the-art radiator designs. A high turndown ratio makes a deployable radiator more suitable for missions that have widely fluctuating thermal environments. Similar work includes the CubeSat thermal louvers passively actuated by bimetallic coils developed by Allison Evans. The louvers open to reveal a more emissive interior surface, effectively changing the surface properties of the radiator. However, they do not significantly increase the radiative surface area, which limits the maximum potential heat loss compared to other dynamic thermal control methods, such as deployable radiators. These louvers were demonstrated on board the Dellinger CubeSat in 2018. JAXA has developed a passively deployed radiator, which is actuated by a shape memory alloy or SMA element. As the temperature of the satellite increases, a strip of SMA, which you can see here at the top of the panel, is designed to unfold, deploying the panel and revealing a highly emissive interior surface. Through on the ground testing, they have demonstrated that the SMA actuator can deploy and stow the panel as the SMA temperature cycles between positive and negative 30 degrees Celsius. However, due to the nature of shape memory alloy actuators, this system has a 10 degree Celsius hysteresis between the opening and closing of the panel. Additionally, uh, actuation typically occurs relatively rapidly, resulting in bimodal operation with the deployable radiator panel being positioned in an either fully open or fully closed configuration, rather than being able to reach steady state in a partially open configuration. In this work, we propose a dynamic passively deployed radiator fin array consisting of triangular panels. The triangular panels are actuated with a bimetallic coil that consists uh, or that deploy in response to an increase in the CubeSat temperature and reveal a highly emissive interior surface of the satellite and radiator fins. 
This approach is novel as it's the first CubeSat thermal control system that employs an array of passively deployable panels for increased redundancy and efficiency. In addition to being the first to use bimetallic coils to passively actuate a radiator panel. Advantages of this system include improved reliability and decreased complexity and weight from not relying on an active control system. Additionally, this design can offer a potentially higher turndown ratio and maximum heat loss due to the use of optimized deployable radiator fins rather than louvers. And compared with the SMA actuator panel, this design has the advantage of being able to reach intermediate steady state positions with minimal hysteresis. The purpose of this work is to explore the potential of this approach and lay the groundwork for more robust testing and design. Specifically, this includes determining the potential turndown ratios the system could produce, the presence of hysteresis in the actuation of the panels, and the relationship between the temperature of the bimetallic coils and the angle of the panels. These goals were accomplished by creating an exploratory experimental prototype and heating it inside a vacuum chamber, as well as building a thermal model to predict heat loss from a CubeSat face with four deployable triangular radiator panels. One of the keys to this design is the custom bimetallic coils. These coils were produced by Crest Manufacturing out of P675R, which is a bimetal known for its high flexitivity. The dimensions shown here were selected to balance the desired rotation with need for sufficiently high force to actuate the panel. The manufacturer predicted that when heated, the coils would curl 3.6 degrees for every one degree Celsius change in the coil temperature. On the right here, you can see the design of our exploratory experimental prototype. We're using two bimetallic coils to rotate a rod, which has a single triangular radiator um, fin. The end of the coil not connected to the rod is fixed to a panel, which represents the body of the CubeSat. A thin film capped on heater is attached to the back of the plates, and when the heater is turned on, it warms the CubeSat body. Heat is then transferred by conduction through the bimetallic coils and mounting brackets, as well as by radiation to the ra triangular radiator fin. Seven thermocouples are epoxied to various parts of the fin, coils, and CubeSat body. On the left here, we have uh, the experimental vacuum chamber setup, which includes the components shown here. The test article was fixed to an optical plate and contact points between the CubeSat frame and test fixtures were insulated with plates of G10. The rotational motion of the panel was measured using a vernier rotary motion sensor. As the, as the purpose of the experiment was to establish a relationship between the temperature of the bimetallic coil and the angle of rotation of the panel and thus provide an initial demonstration of the validity of our design, we decided to simulate an operating temperature range of zero to 85 degrees Celsius. Since the ambient temperature was 20 degrees C, this meant that the temperature set point for the test was 105 degrees Celsius. And while such a large temperature range may be greater than what's allowable for some satellites, this range enabled exploration of the approach and the extent of performance of the coils. Using two thermocouples attached to the CubeSat frame as reference, a PID temperature controller cycled the power supply connected to the thin film heater in order to maintain the frame at the set point temperature. The CubeSat frame was maintained at 105 degrees Celsius until steady state was reached, um, which we considered to be when the average rod temperature changed by less than one degree Celsius over the course of 10 minutes, and then was held there for another 45 minutes. The power supply was then shut off and the test article was allowed to cool. On the right here, you can see an image of the test article and experimental setup. In the center of the image is the triangular radiator fin connected to the rod, which is the axis of rotation for the panel. On the top and bottom of the rod are the two bimetallic coils, ball bearing washers, and mounting brackets. Additionally, you can see up in the upper left corner, the uh, vernier rotary motion, motion sensor. On the top and bottom of the CubeSat face, are the strips of G10 used to insulate the system and test fixturing. We modeled the heat transfer relative to the radiator deployment angle for a set of four triangular radiator panels using a computational heat transfer package in SOLIDWORKS. The purpose of the model was to determine the potential turndown ratio 
that a CubeSat thermal control system using four triangular radiator fins could achieve. Thus, the steady state model assumes the main CubeSat body and fins are aluminum and have a thermal conductivity of 170 watts per meters Kelvin. The interior surfaces of the fins and the exterior surface of the CubeSat face have an emissivity of 0.9, and the exterior of the fins have an emissivity of 0.1. There's also a thermal resistance of 0.01 Kelvin per watt between the CubeSat body and each triangular radiator fin. This thermal resistance is typical for a heat pipe, which is one method by which the radiator panels and CubeSat body could be thermally connected in a finalized design. Currently, the test article described on the previous slide conducts heat from the CubeSat face to the radiator panel, primarily via conduction through the coils and ball bearing washers the rod is mounted to and thus has a much higher thermal resistance. This model also emits the behavior of the bimetallic coils in their transient response to changes in temperature. Instead, the panels are rotated manually and the change in radiative heat loss is observed. This figure shows the temperature data collected from seven thermocouples during a representative test and is separated into three stages, heating, steady state, and cooling as the power supply is turned off. The CubeSat top and CubeSat middle temperatures, which are displayed here in green um, and are at the top, are used as the reference temperatures for the PID temperature controller and behave as expected, heating quickly, reaching uh, the set point, and then cooling when the power supply is turned off during the cooling portion of the test. Of the remaining thermocouples, the coil center and coil outside, which are um, in blue, record the next highest temperatures, showing that initially heat is flowing through the coil from the outside to the center, and then to the rod and radiator panel. The two thermocouples on the rod, which are in orange, record the next warmest temperature, and the panel tip thermocouple in gray was the coolest, which is as expected for a uh, radiator fin. On the right here, you can see the radiator panel angle data as a function of time for each of the tests. During the heating phase, the bimetallic coils rotate the panel predictably. However, during the steady state portion of the test, um, when the average temperature of the coil has leveled out, the coils continue to rotate at a slower rate. Additionally, some of the tests exhibited a sudden jump in the measured temperature during the steady state portion. This is likely due to um, some static friction in the system, especially at larger deployment angles. As the rotation rate slows, this friction appears to prevent the coil from fully curling. The motion sensor may provide some resistance at higher deployment angles due to the somewhat imprecise nature of its alignment with the rod, leading to the stickiness of the coils at those higher angles. We assume that further improving the alignment of the motion sensor, the ball bearing and washer mounts, and the rod would reduce or eliminate the continued creep of the coil during um, steady state, as well as the occasional jumps in the deployment angle during that same period. It's worth noting that even though there's some stickiness or nonlinearity in the coils at high deployment angles, the coils still provide a positionally continuous operation and the ability to achieve intermediate steady state positions, especially relative to the SMA actuator previously mentioned. We then plotted the average temperature of the bimetallic coil as a function of the angle of the radiator panel at that same time. We calculated two lines of best fit for the coil temperature versus deployment angle plots for each test, one for the heating and steady state phases and the other for the cooling phase. The slope for these lines of best fit and the associated R squared values uh, can be seen here in this table. The magnitude of the slope represents the number of degrees of panel rotation per degree Celsius as the average coil temperature changes. The average slope during the heating and steady state uh, phase was found to be 3.85 degrees rotation per degree Celsius with an average R squared value of 0.948. Likewise, the average slope for the cooling phase was 3.88 degrees rotation per degree Celsius with an average R squared value of 0.991. Uh, you'll note that the two average slopes for the heating and cooling over all the cycles of the test were close, but the average R squared values for the cooling phase was much higher than for heating and steady state. 
And this is likely due to uh, the increased friction in the system at higher deployment angles, um, which at slower rates of temperature change causes the coils to not behave as linearly as in other portions of the test, as previously mentioned. And we think that improving the alignment of the system, uh, as we mentioned uh, previously, will increase the R squared value for the heating portion without significantly changing the average slopes for the heating or cooling phases. Here we have the results of the finite element analysis. As the angle of deployment of the triangular radiator fins increases from 0 to 180, radiative losses from both the top surface of the CubeSat body and the panel increase, as expected. By dividing the model total radiative heat loss when the panels are fully open by the total heat loss when the panels are fully closed, we calculate a turndown ratio of 7.65. At partial deployment, Large turndown ratios are still possible. For instance, deployment from 0 to 90 degrees uh, results in a turndown ratio of about 4.7. The purpose of this research was to explore the viability of a dynamic thermal control system that relied on passively deployed radiator panels actuated by bimetallic coils. The experimental results suggest that there is a reliable linear relationship between the temperature of the bimetallic coils and the angle of the deployable radiator. That is, for every degree Celsius, the average coil temperature increases. We observe the panel to rotate um, approximately 3.85 degrees on average. This means that in order to fully deploy the radiator from 0 to 180 degrees, the coils would need to be heated 46.8 degrees Celsius, which would give a predicted turndown ratio of 7.65. Uh, assuming a hinge thermal resistance of 0.01 Kelvin per watt. These findings strengthen our confidence in the thermal control system described here and suggest that further exploration is warranted. However, for this exploratory prototype to better reflect the conditions of an actual CubeSat thermal control system, some changes will need to be made to address some of the findings of the testing, namely the large temperature gap between the CubeSat and the rest of the system and the stickiness of the coils at steady state. Uh, as a reminder, the large gap between the CubeSat body stand-in and the bimetallic coils and radiator panel can be seen in this plot here um, of the thermocouple temperatures versus time for a representative test. The CubeSat body temperatures are in green and the rest of the system is more than 50 degrees Celsius cooler. Uh, during the steady state portion, suggesting there's significant heat loss through paths other than through the triangular radiator panel. The nonlinear sticky behavior of the coils can be seen in this plot to the right and occurred at high deployment angles as the rate of um, angle change decreased. Even as the temperature of the coils leveled off, the coils continued to creep and even jump, likely due to friction in the system and the resistance of the rotary motion sensor. These issues will be addressed in future work in this area. The conductive pathway between the frame of the CubeSat and the bimetallic coils and base of the radiator panel should be improved potentially by adding a thermal hinge. This would allow the bimetallic coils and the base of the triangular radiator to more closely track the temperature of the CubeSat frame. Given the same ratio between the average coil temperature and angular rotation of the radiator panel, this would cause the panel to open up further for the same temperature increase in the CubeSat body. Additionally, we'll look for ways to better align the rod, coils, and rotary motion sensor to reduce the stickiness of the coils at high deployment angles. Finally, for the experimental prototype to achieve the turndown ratios predicted in the FEA model, the interior surfaces of the radiator panel and the exterior surface of the CubeSat frame must be coated with a high emissivity paint and then the exterior surface of the radiator would be coated with a low emissivity paint. Further work should be done on the thermal model to incorporate these findings on the relationship between the temperature of the coils and the rotation of the panels, which again is that there's a linear relationship between the, the, the temperature of the coils and the deployment angle of the radiator of about 3.9 degrees rotation per degree Celsius. This improved model would include the transient response of the CubeSat and radiator systems, incorporating the temporal relationship between the panel rotation and radiative heat loss. Additionally, um, the actual geometry of the system would be modeled with experimentally determined thermal conductivities and resistances. 
And this model would then be verified experimentally in the vacuum chamber with an improved thermal measurement system, such as an IR camera. So thank you, and any questions? Uh, thank you, Josh. That was a fantastic presentation. Um, looks like we've got about eight or nine minutes for questions. Uh, Bill, did we have any uh, coming through the, the live stream? Yeah, it looks like we got, uh, we have at least one multi-part question here. Um, what was the approximate size of the test system? Um, so we modeled the CubeSat body to be just half of a normal CubeSat face, and then the triangular radiator fin was size so that four fins would cover the face of a, of a standard 1U CubeSat. Okay. Did the coil have to fight gravity while actuating? Or was there friction? Was friction the only force working against the actuation? So, um, as you can see in, in our image of the experimental setup, we mounted the uh, test article vertically. So, or the axis of rotation was vertical, so that there it didn't have to fight by gravity. So, yeah, we we suspect that the the issue with the coils is primarily just friction in the system, and then the rotary motion sensor, which might be causing a bit of resistance as the panel deploys uh, more fully. Okay, I had a little connection issue. I'm uh, refreshing my feed just to make sure I've caught all the questions that are in the chat. Uh, here we go, it's reloading. Um, Okay, that appears to be the only questions in the chat right now. We could we could wait another minute or so because there is a, a little bit of a delay. Let me see. I, I have one question. I didn't formulate it well, but um, the uh, when you guys were putting together this work, and did you did you do any uh, literature search or uh, do any and in, look into background of uh, what other organizations may have been doing similar work with small sats and SMA technology? Uh, yeah, so um, uh, we, we primarily found the uh, SMA actuated radiator panel developed by. Um, Jose Nagano uh, at JAXA. Um, That's the. Um, they've done quite a bit of work over the past ten years or so um, from the literature that I was able to find. Uh, I didn't find any other um, SMA actuated radiator panels that were as fully developed as theirs. Okay, thanks. Uh, we did have another question that came in. Is there feedback from the community on this approach uh, that you might be able to share with us? Um, uh, we haven't gotten any feedback uh, specifically on this approach. Um, that's one of the, the reasons we're, we're sharing this now. We're just in the initial stages, but uh, we, we do think it shows promise and um, would love to hear uh, from the community um, if they're, you know, any concerns or, or suggestions that they might have. Okay, thank you. Uh, it, Warren, it doesn't appear that we have any other questions in the chat right now, so. Okay, yeah, maybe we'll just give it, give it another minute because there is quite a lag um, to the, the live stream. Um, and uh, there we go, we got another question for you. <laughs> Okay. Uh, let me let me uh, let me uh, read through here. Uh, uh, this person's curious about the longevity of a system like this. What are your thoughts about how long a system like this could reliably function? And is it is it prone to deformation over multiple cycles? Yeah, that's a that's a great question and definitely something that um, we will want to look into because obviously, um, you know, if this is going to go um, you know, uh, into space, we need to be sure that it'll last. Um, 
I believe for bimetallic coils in general, um, that's not a huge concern. However, with how we're using them here and sort of the environment they'll be in, um, I think that's something we'll definitely want to look into. Okay, and we have another question. Is there any concern with the packaging and insulation of the bimetallic springs? Yeah, um, definitely. So um, we want the bimetallic coils to be uh, as uh, closely tied to the temperature of the CubeSat body as possible. So right now, um, we, we just have them kind of out in the open. I think in a, a finalized design, in addition to adding a thermal hinge, um, we would want to uh, kind of insulate them um, so they're not just exposed to space and um, do as much as we could to improve the uh, thermal connection between the body and the, the coils. Um, I have another question. Uh, what uh, the work you're doing for, for CubeSat specifically, uh, I realize that, but how, how much, uh, do you think there's any limitations on, on scaling this up? Um, I think the main limitation is just the bimetallic coils. Um, there's, a, there's a pretty tricky relationship between how much they can rotate per degree Celsius and the force they're capable of exerting. Um, so obviously, if we had a lot more space, we could rotate larger panels. However, you know, trying to keep it as compact as possible, um, we can't rotate panels much larger than, than the one we have here. Okay, thank you.